Today's lecture will look at the time-dependent non-degenerate perturbation theory. And then next week we'll do plenty of examples. Uh, that is the week after the break, we'll do plenty of examples. And we'll also look at the degenerate case. So today we're going to look at the time-dependent perturbation theory. Gives the unperturbed energies E and not psi and not. 
this is well known. This system is already well known. Now what we would like to do, if the system is initialized in state psi n naught at time 0, if this is the initial state of the system, okay, this is our psi at time t to 0. So initially the system starts off in an eigen state of the Hamiltonian, of the unperturbed Hamiltonian. We know that with time, this, since this is a stationary state of the Hamiltonian, with time it, it will not be evolved. At most what can happen, it can acquire a phase factor, E n naught T O H bar, right? So this is what is going to happen if we start off in, in a stationary state of the unperturbed Hamiltonian. And the Hamiltonian just has the, this background part. In general, if we start off in the state C n times psi n, so if we have a linear combination of these eigenstates, then this will not be an eigenstate of the Hamiltonian. So if our Hamiltonian were just H naught, then with time this state will uh, evolve in this fashion, right? So this is the time dependent state. So this is a time dependent state when the Hamiltonian is also time, is time independent and it's just H naught. Okay? Of course this is not an eigenstate of the unperturbed Hamiltonian, but nevertheless you can uh, weight each uh, state with the corresponding phase factor, have this coefficient which represents the initial distribution of the state and evolve it in time and sum of overall the initial state. So this is how the state will evolve in time. If your Hamiltonian is just H naught, just the time independent. Here you will notice that all the time dependence is in this phase factor, in this relative phase factor. These are relative phase factors now. This Cn is, there are multiple Cn's for as many n's you have, whatever the dimensionality of the system. And e, but each CN is a constant. The CN does not evolve, change with time. All the time dependence has been factored into these phase factors. However, if our Hamiltonian is time dependent, that is now we apply a perturbation that is time dependent, how will this scenario change? Still, still we are starting off in the state. So at time t equals 0, our state is some CN at time t equals 0 into psi n naught sum over all possible values of n. This is our initial state. Now how will this state change with time? So at any later time we can express the state psi p as a linear combination of the eigen of the unperturbed Hamiltonian modulated by the relative phase factors E minus I E and not TH bar. And if you would like to make this state now varying with the time dependent Hamiltonian, I would like to make this time dependent. I would like to factor in all the time dependent in this portion Cn. So I would put Cn as a function of time and sum up over all possible values. About time dependent Schrodinger equation. So this So it has to go somewhere. We know that whatever later time it is, it can only be expressed or can always be expressed as a superposition of these states. Now if the time Hamilton is time independent to acquire this phase factor. You would like to keep this phase factor. Okay? And in each value of n you put in a coefficient. It's also possible that we drop this factor here and put all the phase factor into this. But that will slightly complicate. 
indicating calculation, you can also do that to do for time dependent. This is for a time dependent Hamiltonian. For a time independent Hamiltonian, this is just a constant. Okay. Another possibility is that for all of this, B of T, it doesn't harm you. You can still get equivalent results. Okay. So this is our time dependent state. Solving the Schrodinger equation for the time dependent Hamiltonian means that we would like to find out the time dependent of these coefficients. Right? That's all we need to do. So these C and means as a function of time are unknown. And this is what we would like to find out. Okay? Now if you look at the time dependent Schrodinger iota h bar d by dt of the time dependent state, this gives us the Hamiltonian times the state. The Hamiltonian now is H0 plus lambda HP is a function of time psi. Okay. Now let's look at the left hand side of this equation, iota H bar d by dt of our time dependent state. But this is an answer. This kind of solution, this kind of approach is called that we are using this wave function as an ansatz, as a trial solution. Okay? We are using this as an ansatz and putting this ansatz into the left hand side of the time dependent shooting equation, the time derivative of the state, C and C. Remember, these are labels for time independent states, psi and non. Okay. Now you perform the derivative iota h bar sum of time derivative of the C and D C N D D E minus E T over h bar psi and non. Plus iota h bar sigma c n t minus t e h bar e over h bar sin naught. Okay. So I will form the derivative. This is what I get. This h bar cancels out. Iota multiplied with iota gives me plus one. So I'm left with iota h bar sum of b c n over b t t minus e n naught t h bar psi n naught. This gives me plus c n t e n naught t minus iota e n naught t h bar. Now let's look at the right hand side. If I look at the right hand side, the right hand side is simply H not acting on the state. Now if H not acts on the state, what do I get? I get sigma n C n E minus E n T over H bar E n naught psi n naught, right? Plus Lambda times n c n t t minus alpha t n naught t over h for h p, which is a function of time, right? Now this h is a function of time acting on psi n naught. This is an operator, so it just goes right next to the cat. This is just a scale. Okay. Now this is the right hand side. This is the left hand side. Is there some cancellation that I can perform? Yes. This term cancels out this term. Okay, because there is an EN naught here and an EN naught here. And there is no operator terms, just the state. So this thing cancels out. And what I am left with is the following form. 
iota h bar summed over all possible values of n, b, c, n, d, t, d, t, e minus iota e n naught t over h bar acting on the unperturbed eigen stage of unperturbed lambda n c n t e minus iota e n naught t over h bar h b acting on the side n. Okay. Now, how can I pick up a certain coefficient? How do I pick up coefficients? I would like to pick up a certain coefficient. What can I do to this equation? T0. 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 T0 can I do? T0 can I do? Here, uh, for each summation, there will be the sorry, the eigenstates, uh, the psi and not the compare. How do you compare? Here is the operator. This operator in states will change. Here is the operator. So I can project this equation onto one of the eigenstates. Let's project this onto, say, psi j0. So that will help me pick up the coefficients. So if I project all of this, this equation on psi j naught, I will get i will have h bar. Now this summation will go away because I'm projecting state of psi j, j naught. So I'm just picking up the value of n which is equal to j. So the summation will go away, I will get iota h d c j d t e minus iota e j naught t over h bar right the inner product of course is 1 when n equals j equals lambda likewise now here I cannot pick up pick up a value because there is an operator here so I will keep this summation, sum over all of n's, c, n, t, t minus iota, t, n, not t by h bar, psi, j, not sandwiching the time dependent perturbation psi. So this is what I have left off with. Now I would just like to make a change of variable for con conforming to what is in the book. And the change of variable is that I place, I make this a sum over all of j's. Right? I replace n by j. I put a j here. So n is replaced by j. And I replace the j's by n's. So I can make this I am interested in finding Cn. Okay? This is a chain of variable. Just to conform to what is there in the book. Alright. Yeah, you must have done it. Above here. So what is source of equation for B? C N D. This is something that I want to find. I want to find out how does the coefficient C N, how does each of the coefficients C N change? Okay? So this becomes minus iota over h bar into lambda sum over all of all states, all possible values of j, c, j, e, e minus iota, e, j, naught, minus e, n, naught, e over h bar, psi of n, naught, H P T side of J no, right? Okay. 
یه دیگه یه مقدر نمیده دوست دیگه دوست دیگه دوست دیگه دوست دیگه Just for simplicity, this is a frequency. I call this frequency omega j n, which is e j naught minus e n naught divided by h bar. Okay, and you will notice that this term is just a scalar. It's a matrix element of the perturbative Hamiltonian. Which matrix element? That is in the position n rho and j column. Right? So this is sometimes also represented as H P N J. Function of I know. Right? This is just an element. Now look at the terms that are 
independent of plasma on the left hand side. You have DC and not by DC. They don't have a term that is independent of plasma. So you could see it. Okay. So up to the lowest order expansion, the coefficients do not change with time. Okay, they are constant. The coefficient that you seek to determine is constant. Now let's look at the next order. Okay. To the next order, D, C, and I call it the first order, D, D. I don't have to put in this parameter time over and over again. It's understood. Anyway, I put it here. I will get this a lambda term here. So I get minus iota h bar sum over all of j c uh, c j t t minus iota omega j and t over h bar psi n not h p psi And what is that? This is CJ norm. Because I have to expand this CJ as well. I expand this CJ. It becomes CJ naught plus CJ one plus CJ two plus CJ three.
Now remember that each of the coefficients, what is this Cj0? This Cj0, these are the zeroth order terms in each of the coefficients. And we know that these are constants. And these are determined by the initial conditions. So initially our state was Time to zero. This is our initial state. So these are these are the coefficients that you started off with in your state. So these are nothing but the C n norms. Okay. So you start start off with the state with the coefficient C n. So you know that up to zero order the coefficient none of the coefficient changes with time. Up to zero thousand. That's what the perturbation theory is telling you from here. So this coefficient must be the same as the coefficient, the nth coefficient at time equal to zero. Hence, the coefficients here are determined from the initial conditions, the initial coefficients. These are the same as the initial coefficients. Now let's look at some applications. जो zero और time और time के पास जो नहीं है, ये जो j हो है, no लेकर जो हम उसे use कर रहे हैं, ये जितना भी, हाँ, ये constant है ये लेकर, constant। अब आप कह रहे हैं यहाँ n है वहाँ j, तो this will apply for any n. Likewise, if you apply for any j, यहाँ साधा में n लिखूँ, इधर n लिखूँ, n m इस n को छोड़ लिखूँ, तो k लिखूँ, तो यहाँ मुझे k लिखना पड़ेगा, ये तो लेकर चलना। Sir, j और n में both different कौन से हैं? अच्छा, j और n के ठीक है? और ये वाला j n के बराबर भी हो सकता है, लेकिन फिर वो frequency zero आ जाएगी, ठीक है? बराबर हो सकता है कुछ है, कोई Now let's look at some beautiful application of this perturbation, time dependent perturbation. Immense applications. I think almost one fourth of our technological civilization is dependent upon this. Such an important one because whenever an atom is interacting with field around it, whenever light is there and its atom matter is interacting with light or matter is emitting light. This kind of perturbation is at foreground. It's at the background. This is not the case. Look, first I want to talk about the transition problem. Suppose you have two levels. And this part, by the way, is small as compared to H0. 
Because if you look at this expansion, uh, the expansion for the C that we wrote here, this is not the series must truncate. This series must asymptotically approach zero. And that is only possible when these coefficients become smaller and smaller and smaller. Okay. So this is only a good approximation this thing. Only when the coefficients are small. Or when the time is small. If this time goes really large, then this integral will also go large. So you would like so this is just an approximate thing and it's correct up to a certain order. Anyway, so we have this Hamiltonian, we have an initial state and we have a final state. We know that under the action of this Hamiltonian, we are creating new new states. The state after time t, psi as a function of time t, you already know, is equal to C n, which are functions of time, t e minus iota e n naught e over h bar psi n, right? So even though you started off in a state psi n naught some c n time t equals 0 this is the state you started off in, right? This was your initial state. This time it has evolved into this state because these coefficients now changing the time. Okay, this was the initial state. The C n at time t equals 0. Okay. And with time, this is the new state that has been created. And this coefficient has a zero order term, which are exactly similar to the initial conditions, plus higher order terms, okay, which are determined from the perturbation theory. Now, if this is your state as it evolves in time, you would like to find out what's the probability that you make a measurement and you detect the system to the final state. So this is your initial state or this is your initial state and you would like to find the probability that you are getting this final state which is your desired state. So you have an entire manifold of initial states and only one of these states is the state you wish to achieve. You would like to find out the probability of making a transition in this final state given an initial state, which is this one. Okay? What is the probability that the system can make a transition to the final state? Okay, the probability will be a function of that. So how do you calculate the probability? Of course you will take this time dependent state and take its projection of the final state. Okay? So your probability of going from an initial state to a final state which is a function of time will simply be psi f e in a product with psi e modulus with okay and if you take the inner product of this state with the final state what do you get
So maybe what? If initially, if initially the final state was not populated, some other state was populated. What's the initial uh, CF at times equals zero? Zero. So if you would calculate probability of going from initial to the final state with F with the CF at time equals zero being zero, then this probability will simply be the modulus squared of this term, right? Because this is zero. Okay? So I can write this as now the modulus squared <coughs> one over h bar squared. J all possible J, right? This is J minus E J not E minus I omega J. Now N is the final set J F, right? E dash psi final not H P function of time psi J not modulus squared. So this is the transition probability that you end up in the desired final state. Okay? It depends upon the initial conditions. What is the initial state? It depends upon the energy difference between the final state and each of the initial states. And it depends upon the matrix element of the perturbation matrix But it's some operator B. 
which has dimensions of energy. Okay, so now the perturbation is cosine sinusoid. Initially, suppose in our initial condition is that C of 1 is 1 at time 0. Abhi time 0 hai, ye wo superscript ni hai. Which means that initially the system is in this state. So if this is true, then by conservation of probability C2 at time equal 0 must be 0. So what I would like to find is the probability of going from 1 to 2 as a function of time. Okay, and I would like to use the time dependent perturbation theory to the first order. Now we know that up to the 0 order, C1 up to the 0 order will remain 1. And C2 up to the 0 order will remain 0. So the 0 order expansion tells you that none of these coefficients are going to change. Now let's look at the first order. Uh, first order term. I would like to calculate this transition amplitude. This transition amplitude is simply given by 1 over h bar square okay now I have to sum up over j's now what is the possible value of j 1 and 2 okay j no possibility you know, 1 or 2 is 2 level system here. but c1 of 0 c1 is one and C2 is zero. This, right? So I don't take into account C, the, the J equals two term. I just have to consider the J equals one term. And this summation goes away. So I will write zero to D. Now what is C1? The zero to order term of C1 is just one. T e, therefore minus iota omega J F initial minus final. Initial minus final is minus omega naught and is a minus sign here, so I put plus i omega naught t dash, right? Deco, omega jf This omega jf is omega j minus omega final. My omega final is 2. So this is omega 1 minus omega 2, which is minus omega 1. So I put minus omega 1 is become plus. And then I have ket 2, which is my final state. H t, which is v that v had cosine omega t which is just a scalar. Cosine omega t dash and integrate to respect to P dash. Okay. What is the modulus square? So this becomes, this number Now this is just a matrix element, it is a complex number. Let us call this V21. This is V21 modulus square H bar square. Now what I need to do, I need to find this integral. Right? Modulus square. Okay.
ये भी E dash है E I omega naught plus omega into E minus one over iota omega naught plus one इसका इंटेग्रल है आयोटा ये वो इंटेग्रल है आयो आयो ई रेस पर आयोटा ओमेगा नॉन प्लस ओमेगा इसकी लिमिट है ना जीरो से तीन तक ठीक है मैंने इसे बी ये बात ये पूरा एक स्केलर है ना एक इनर प्रोडक्ट है इट जस्ट स्केलर है चाहे इनर प्रोडक्ट जस्ट बोल कम था या मॉडल स्पीड भी था। सो आर ट्रांसिशन प्रोबेबिलिटी ऑफ गोइंग फ्रॉम इनिशियल टू द फाइनल स्टेट कम्स आउट एस बी वन वन एस फंक्शन ऑफ टाइम इज बी टू वन मॉडल स्क्वेयर फोर एच बार स्क्वेयर। नाउ लेट्स लुक एट दिस टर्म यहाँ तक कौन की सब ठीक है सिर्फ इंटेग्रेट के साथ अब देखो दिस इज द फर्स्ट ऑर्डर दिस इज द प्रोबेबिलिटी नाउ लेट्स मेक एन अप्रोक्सिमेशन लेट्स अस्यूम दैट आर ओमेगा इज क्लोज टू ओमेगा नॉट व्हिच मींस दैट वी हैव नियर रेजोनेंस कंडीशन ओके लेट्स अस्यूम सॉरी ये जाता है मैं फ्यूज हो गया हूँ ये माइनस वन आता है इंटीग्रेशन लिमिट्स का भी है ना अच्छा सही सही जब जीरो होगा तो बंद होता है सॉरी ठीक है लेट्स इस यू वी आर नियर रेजोनेंस व्हेन के नियर रेजोनेंस ओमेगा नॉट माइनस ओमेगा इज़ स्मॉल टा ओमेगा नॉट प्लस ओमेगा इज़ मच लार्जर व because this is a small term in the denominator, this will become a big term. So this big term will dominate this sum. We can ignore that. Now this is an approximation. But this term will be small any day, even if you are far from resonance. You are far from resonance, this will be very large. This term is going to be really small. Because there is a problem at the end of your chapter 15, which actually shows you what will happen if you take into account this term, it will be really small term. So if I just consider the near resonance condition, just consider this term, then I can approximate the transition probability. It's already been approximated by the way, because it's a first order expansion. So this approximate, I make a further approximation of being near resonance, what I will get is the modulus square of this term. Okay, now what's the modulus square of this term? The denominator just becomes omega naught minus omega squared. Iota just goes away because it's modulus squared. And I take the modulus squared of the numerator. The modulus squared of the numerator is E minus I omega naught minus omega T e plus uh, minus 1 multiplied by E plus I omega naught minus omega t minus 1. Correct?
इसको इससे मल्टीप्लाई किया वन आ गया इसको इससे मल्टीप्लाई किया एक और वन आ गया इसको इससे किया माइनस ई माइनस आई मेगा नॉट माइनस टू मेगा पी तो इसको इससे किया माइनस ई आई मेगा नॉट माइनस टू मेगा पी ठीक है डिवाइड करें ओ मेगा नॉट माइनस ओ मेगा स्क्वेयर इसको थोड़ा सा आगे चला के देखते हैं ये भी बन जाएगा ये टू को साइन और माइनस टू को साइन ऑफ मेगा नॉट माइनस टू मेगा पी H bar square one minus cosine of omega naught minus omega p omega naught minus omega square. ठीक है? ये जब बैठे हैं उसको आइए। ठीक है कि नहीं नहीं सब ये तो समझा रहा था मॉडल स्क्वायर ये मॉडल स्क्वायर ऑफ i iota जो है हम माइनस है ना माइनस है चीज़ 
अच्छा देखो अब सवाल उत्तर तो होता है कि what happens on resonance what happens to the probability on resonance एक बार तो आपको इन बिटवीन क्योंकि the probability is varying sinusoidal bit time now on resonance that omega not equals omega so would the probability go to infinity what will happen at omega not minus omega can you think of a mathematical trick that one can perform to make that डॉक्टर आज जूम कर ले हाँ वो भी ठीक है वही ठीक है इस चीज को फाइनाइट करना है इसको यूं फाइनाइट करना है डॉक्टर आज जूम जो आप कहने में किसी की एक मैनिफेस्टेशन ही मैं कर लेता हूँ लेकिन डिनोमिनेटर के जीरो Now what is this function? This is our sinc function. Sinc of omega minus omega naught three by two square. Sinc square. Hey, let's go plot this. So if I want to plot 
the probability of making a transition from one to two, and I will plot it as a function of omega. I'll simply have to plot the sine sin square for me. Okay. So where is this function p? This function p come here. At what value of omega? Omega not here. So this is my omega axis. When my incoming radiation has is on perfectly on resonance with the system, that is when my omega is equal to omega naught, this function peaks. And the function looks like this. It's a well known function in mathematical physics. It's the same function. So this is probability at some time, at some time B. Okay? If time changes, what's going to happen to the problem? The probability is going to increase quadratically. Okay? So at some later time, this probability is going to increase further. And when it increases, it shrinks. Okay? So if you, this is what you can do. First of all, the yellow curve. Then this 
theory does not work. So now what we have is that if we know the frequency of the incoming radiation, at some small time we can find what's the probability that the atom will make a condition. Okay. In reality, in reality we don't have monochromatic sources. Even laser will have spread of frequencies. So the next lecture, after the break, when we discuss more applications of time independent and dependent perturbation theory, we look at what happens when a broadband light source is used. What, how does a laser function? What are A and B coefficients, the Einstein coefficients? Okay. What is the Fermi Golden? How does photoelectric effect work? All of this is based upon the formulas that we developed in the previous two years. The perturbation theory is the cornerstone of quantum mechanics. It, because since it is your first opening into the real world, because in quantum mechanics, generally we've been studying closed systems, analytical systems, which have closed form solutions, which are exactly soluble. But that is extremely restrictive because real problems, you go beyond the hydrogen atoms, everything becomes approximate. This is your first opening to the real world. Now, armed with the arsenal of quantum mechanics, you can probe into real problems. You can tackle those real problems. But this is your first opening to the real world with quantum mechanics. Inshallah, see you after the break. Have a good day. And there's a there's an elaborate homework that I posted on like level questions. You can't do the homework one or two days before the deadline. So what does it mean? Just email me. I can give you some tips.